Maisie will take her, take her place and watch the Hound Group. <laughs> a VIP seat for the Best in Show winner, yes. Thank you so much, Nick. So we do, of course, now come to the second group. It's my pleasure to introduce our judge for this group, the Hounds. He's a gentleman with tremendous experience. So the Hound Group hound is the final eagles, group judging of this evening. And these breeds are originally bred for Together hunting, either by smell wife, or Sarah, by sight. And uh, judge UK for champion, this evening is Gavin UK Robertson, a man who you know, Frank. And he, he's, he's he'll feel very familiar in this ring because he has been best in show at Crufts with the Petit Bassett Griffin Vaudian and a reserve best in show and won another group. So he's familiar territory. So and very experienced across all of the hound breeds. And it's a big group, this one, isn't it? A very big group, yes. And uh, very mixed in size, coat, and their, their work. So we already have a Siberian Husky through to Best in Show, a Border Collie and an Irish Terrier. So we'll find out in the next half hour or so which hound will join Best in Show on Sunday night. Gavin Robertson. There's the introduction and the welcome for Gavin Robertson. And, I think and he's going to very much enjoy this. So let's see the and first, first view of the dogs as they tonight. come in. He gets his, he just begins to relax Afghan as he sees hound. the dogs. Now the ceremonial's over. Here is the Afghan hound. The Basenji. The barkless dog of the Congo, the Basenji. It's the best in show in 2001 at Crufts. The Basenji. the Britannia. First with the Bassett family, the Bassett Fauve de Britannia. The Grand Basset Griffon yes. Bondian. The largest, the tallest and the longest of the Bassett family, the Grand Basset Griffon Bondian. The Bassett Hound. The archetypal Bassett, the uh, biggest entry of the Bassett breeds today. Yeah, 101 of them this year. The Beagle. Yeah, the tan and white Beagle coming in, topping a big entry. The Bloodhound. The elastic gate of the Bloodhound coming in now. And this one on the vulnerable breeds list, isn't it? The Borzoi. The Russian Wolfhound, the Borzoi. Stunning coat. The Cheneco Deletna. From Sicily, the little rabbit hunter. Elegant. Russell now the coat. first of our Dachshunds, the long-haired Dachshund. And now for the Dachshund family coming in, led in by the standard long-haired. The miniature long-haired Dachshund. Three coat varieties, aren't there, and two sizes for each. So we have a family of six here. The smooth haired Dachshunds. Standard smooth coming in now. Black and tan. Very happy. The miniature smooth haired Dachshund. The miniature smooths have really become very popular as house pets. This is the one that would be known the as the sausage dog. Dachshund. And there is the standard wire haired. Very and nice. The last of our Dachshunds, the miniature wire haired Dachshund. And the same in miniature, the mini wire. And you couldn't get more of a contrast with the next breed that is about to appear. And now something a little larger, the deer hound. The elegance of the deer hound, this light gait striding out. The Finnish Spitz. And something quite different, the Finnish Spitz. Sharp features, this the iridescent Foxhound. red coat. And there is the Foxhound. You don't see many of them in the show ring the in this Greyhound. country. There's the Greyhound, a picture of live and athleticism. And the winner from Import Hound Register, this is the Griffon Fauve de Britannia. The Griffon Fauve de Britannia. The Hamilton Sova. And there's the Swedish Foxhound coming in. And the first time in the main ring, the this is the first for the breed for a long time, the Harrier. The Abethan Hound. 
Well, this is my best of breed winner from the breed judging today. The Irish Wolfhound. Now, the tallest breed in the world, supposedly, the Irish Wolfhound. The Norwegian Elkhound. And very workmanlike, this Elkhound coming in now. Fit for the function with that thick coat. Uh, the lovely, the lovely Otterhound. This one's come from America to win. The Pharaohhound. The Pharaohhound, very ancient. The Portuguese Padengo. <laughs> and the little Portuguese Padengo, the rabbit hunter from Portugal. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. Strong, athletic. The Saluki. The elegance of the Saluki. Light, the lifting Slugi. stride. And he's the Slugi, related to it, but some marked differences. That one looks very happy to be in the big ring. The Whippets. And from a huge entry, over 330, I believe, today for the Whippets. This one's come from Holland. We've seen Whippets being best in show and three finally, times in Crufts history, the last in 2018. The Petit Basset Groupon Bondion, who has a close relationship with the judge and is fortunately going to withdraw from the group. And we're going to see a lap of honour here from owner Jane and Rossi, the Petit Basset Groupon And this is a special Bondien. event. The, the judge today has bred this Petit Basset Griffin Bondien so he can't judge it, so it's withdrawing a lap of honour and then a very sporting withdrawal. You're not allowed to judge dogs which you've bred. You or, in, in, indeed, if you're, you're close friends of, of the people, yes. I have to declare an interest. He did mention Gavin so Robertson's you, own Rossi, pedigree as a breeder, if you like, being a former best in show, and he had a best in breed. Box, Kim and Graham. Thank you, Marina. So this hound group, so we move Frank, on for so many different sizes and looks and appearances that we've seen, but they all have in common that they're bred for hunting either by smell or by sight. So those scent hounds include what the beagle and the bloodhound and the sight hounds would be breeds like the whippet and the greyhound. And, and, and usually the longer legged ones, the galloping breeds are the sight hounds and the ones that are lower to ground so they get their heads down and take in the scent, they are the scent hounds. Evolution is but there are, some who, there are some versatile ones who can do both as we'll see in a moment. So Gavin just walking around the ring, taking in his first glance the outline and balance of the breed. And a lot of these dogs will need a lot of exercise, won't they, if you have one at home? They're hunting dogs, they love to be out, yes. They do love people as well. Pretty trusty companions. Then racing off to run down the target through speed, endurance and persistence. And Gavin now coming to look at the first breed forward for examination. It's the Afghan, the sight hound from Afghanistan. Undoubtedly the most glamorous breed in the group, but underneath the coat there is an athletic, keen sight hound. This breed is probably a descendant of the Saluki from neighboring Persia, but working in the harsh mountainous regions, it grew a coat to give it extra protection. And now it's the coat which gives it the glamour. It's obviously the glamour dog of the group. But that coat, Frank, does have to develop naturally, doesn't it? If there was any evidence of clipping or scissoring, then that would be penalised. Yes, they, 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 the, the coat comes in a pattern. There's a, a bare strip along the back, the saddle, which we see here, the legs and belly are uh, uh, well furnished. The Afghan should have a light lifting gait. The standard asks for a style of a high order. They have to carry themselves proudly and majestically and with a light stride. Full of style. A three year old from South Yorkshire. And that movement, smooth and springy. And you can see that as well. See this lovely almond shaped eye, this long chiseled head, giving that look of elegance and quality. And the ring tail as well. Very important. The ring tail, like a little donut hook at the end. Big feet. Was this bitch 
Basenji is uh, the dog that has no bark. The history of the dog goes back to pharaoh times. This is seven-year-old Selma, who has traveled from Poland. Some interesting historical facts about this interesting breed. The first pair of Basenji... No, this is a hound which does hunt by sight and sound. It often seeks its game by jumping up and down on the spot to look over the high savanna grasslands and it often had a bell attached to its collar so the huntsman could know where it was working. So it's a primitive breed, very interesting. Not only are they barkless, uh, they've got this wonderful high set tail curled over the back, this pricked ears, this pliant coat, and this lovely swinging stride. They are immaculately, fastidiously clean in the house, but they love climbing. They've still got some primitive streaks to them. Now, the Basset Fauve de Britannia, one of my favourites in the hound group. This one, the Basset Fauve, it only comes in this colour. Fauve means fawn, and he was developed in Brittany, a sight hound, often hunting in pairs, and the quarry he went after were hare, rabbit and fox. Billy is six years old from Warrington, and we should be seeing here a quick stride, straight forelegs and a level top line. And I suppose with these dogs, Frank, when they're scent hounds, it's important that those nostrils should be wide open. Yes, wide nostrils. They should be able to have a good length of neck so that they can get their nose down towards the ground to take in the scent. A very crisp coat. It's a double coat. Top coat is hard, softer undercoat to give it protection. Best of breed to come through to the group this evening was this dog, 5956. Five, there were 23 Basset this Griffon Vendéans uh, this and year, and Bassets are generally very tall. Well this is the tallest, the grand variety, of course. It's got the longest legs, the longest body, and the longest ears. And, perseverance, and, very and this one fed, bred in a famous kennel in Holland. Uh, they've been very successful at Crufts. They, um, they come from the Vendée region of Western France, and it, as you say, it's the tallest and the longest. As my friend Jessica would say, everything is stretched in the Grand Basset. Longer ears, longer foreface, longer body. It's got a crisp top coat again, but it must be rustic. It not, must not be over-trimmed. These are fit for function hounds and shouldn't be over-trimmed. And how do those long ears assist it in its original purpose? When they get their head down, it's said that the long ears cup the scent and bring the scent up into the nostrils. And best of breed was this dog number 6101. And this is the Basset perhaps we all know best, the, the archetype Basset, most popular in the UK. It's thought that the, they were developed by French monks in the Middle Ages, and they probably came to England with the Normans for the Norman conquest. And was reputedly bred by the monks of France in the Middle Ages. Well, this is Figaro, who's only 17 months old, and he's travelled to Crufts from Spain. Very low to the ground, having a good old gamble across the across the carpet. Yes, and you know they were allowed a little bit of loose skin to give them protection, some pliability of the skin to give them protection. But breeders have worked hard to get rid of exaggeration in it. Uh, we see him striding out, not too long in the back, again, That's exaggeration in any form. It's not too long in the back, it should be strongly boned. And low to the ground, but it still needs good clearance, doesn't it? It, it does, they have to have ground clearance. Now this one, we see that the front legs are the little curved round the chest. They've got a crook front, we, we call it, one of the breed specialties. The best of breed from 188 exhibits, the highest or the second highest in the hand group today. This is Jake, three-year-old beagle from Darlington. And the beagle is a very sturdy dog, and see that compact outline. It's the smallest of the British pack hounds. Obviously, the tricolor, which we often see, is the most popular. Here we have a tan and white. We also have lemon and white. But this one, really smart, done a lot of winning. It's a group winner already. Has been best of breed at Crufts when he was a junior. 
Everything is fit for function in the Beagle. There's nothing exaggerated. You want a clean, laid-back shoulder to give it long stride in front, a nicely curved back leg to give it propulsive power, and the tail, or with this stern, as they call it in hounds, carried above the back, but not curved over the back. And a lovely, soft expression from those dark eyes. our judge for Bloodhounds today, and from an entry of 20, she selected this dog, number six. Oh, the lovely bloodhound. Coming from Belgium and France, where he was known as the Saint Hubert. One of his ancestors was a hound called the Saint Hubert. He was bred to hunt deer and he was also a stag hound. Like many. In the 19th century. This is five-year-old Mission, who is in fact best of breed, Crufts in 2020. So back again in 2022, and probably Frank, the most famous and well-recognised of the scent hounds, and, and bred in Britain since before 1300. And of course, he was known as the sleuth dog, and Clement Freud would patronise him. But anyway, do you know how they, why they're called bloodhounds? Not because it followed a blood trail, because the term blood was a sign of good breeding. Like as you have a blood horse, you've got a bloodhound, a, a, a dog of high breeding. Only 20 here at Crofts this year. The bloodhound is on the vulnerable breeds list. And now we see the Vorzoi. Today, Mr. Andre van der Broek from the Netherlands was in charge of this most elegant and spectacular breed, a true arist aristocrat of the hound breed. Here we have the, the Borzoi now, the Russian Andre wolfhound, the wolfhound of the Russian aristocracy, first seen in England in the 19th century. This Borzoi, long head, breed, strong jaw, and this curving outline to give it propulsive power. We see the rise over the loin there. great favorite with the Russian courts and nobles. Just a spectacular sight, isn't it, the Borzoi? This is Dustin, who is a five-year-old dog, travelled from Exeter in Devon. The hunting in Russia was a ceremonial occasion with uh, wonderful tents and, and entertainment for the hunters, but the Borzois hunted in pairs and they attacked the wolf from either side to bring down and hold the wolf. This coat must take a tremendous amount of care, Frank. Well, it does, but again, it shouldn't be overdone, really. You have to see the shape of the dog. It's not just about coat and glamour. It has to be fit for function. That's why we've got these long, powerful jaws, this propulsion from the rise over the loin and strong ox. Michelle Farley, best of breed was this bitch number 6431. The breed was approved by the Kennel Club to move to the individual... The Chineco del Etna isn't perhaps as well known as some of the other hounds, but was used for hunting rabbits register. near Mount Etna. And this is 11-month-old Sienna from Manchester. And was a favoured hound for hunting rabbits in the area near And the breed Etna. comes from Sicily, He's and where he used to work on the slopes of Mount down, Etna and hunt, hunt rabbits. Sight. It was known as the Sicilian Greyhound. They are lean and leggy and he elegant and these sharply pricked the ears give it this wonderful look of alertness very sensitive hearing smaller, and great sight and that trot is so distinctive the way the forelegs move it's Jeanette stepping Hedel, out nicely isn't it six, four, three, pliant skin there's a degree of elegance in many of the sight hounds and best puppy at the ladies kennel the association in 2021 only 11 months old Mr. Lloyd Cross was the breed judge today and selected this male and the first of the Dachshund family on the table, now the Teckel from Germany. Teckel means badger. They were bred to hunt badger, but also rabbits. It's a theory that the long hair and the short-haired Dachshunds always existed, cropping up in the litters. They were sort of interbred. The breed name translates from German into badger dog. George is from Bude in Cornwall, five years old. And Dachshunds should be twice as long as they are high, according to the breed standard, but they've got to be able to move freely, haven't they, and not, not be impeded in any way by their long coats. In their native Germany, not only had to, they had to go to ground, but they had to track their prey as well, so they needed ground clearance. We don't want anything exaggeratedly low to ground. They have to have ground clearance. And the, the coat should frame the body, it shouldn't be abundant. And, of course, they should carry themselves with regal dignity, the Dachshund. And that tail almost forms a flag with the, the hair on the very end. Conical shaped head, strongly boned. There were 110. Best of breed was this dog, number 66.
0.04. Rob is the pet name He's for this miniature long haired Dachshund, five and a half years old Dachshund. from Norfolk. And miniatures preferably weigh under Dachshund. five kilograms. They Dachshund. should still be well muscled and compact Dachshund. with enough Dachshund. ground Dachshund. movement Dachshund. for free Dachshund. movement. Rather than by weight. Presumably this is to determine that they are of a size to be One of the great challenges for Dachshund breeders is to get the same type and quality in a miniaturized size. So that's one of the challenges. So this shares the same standard as the, the, long, the standard long hair we've just seen, but everything's in miniature. The conical shaped head, the long rib cage, long level top line and strong bone. Everything scaled down. Now this dog's had a remarkable career. He was best to breed at Crufts from the puppy class years ago. Here he is. I think he's all now almost a veteran and still winning. And one best of breed out of 110 miniatures today. And now perhaps the Dachshund we all know best, the standard smooth Dachshund. Here, the we black and tan, we see on the table the judge dog. going we over the confirmation head. of the dog. See the, the prominent four chest there, strong rain, bone. And resistant to the winds. They were bred, as I say, for tracking and, and also for going to ground after their quarry. In their native Germany, they're measured not Long by weight or height, but by their girth. They have a tape measure put round their rib cage. They shouldn't be oversprung so they can get down into the holes. And did you know, Frank, that this is Blackie, and it's in fact Blackie's second birthday today. Oh, well, so wouldn't that <laughs> best, in, best of breed? He's had a good day, yes. Will it get even better? That's the question. Dog. That's the best of breed, smooth hairs, Dachshund, number 6626. And obviously a very happy, oh yeah, well, and yes, the scent hound, you see, get taken in the now scent. Now we see the miniature smooth haired Dachshund. There were 150 of them here today for Judge Here is a female dog that's only 18 Dachshund. months old. It's Lucy from Northumberland, six, the seven, miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. And there were 150 there of them, of which the Lucy has won best in breed. Again, the low body, of course, with that short smooth coat. And this the comes from a very successful kennel. This is um, Fran Mitchell showing her mother was a Dachshund breeder before her and Fran's own daughter is also a championship show judge. So they've been in the breed for many years, striding out well. The miniature variety has really, especially in the, in the pandemic times, this has been the popular one. This, the registrations have soared in the miniature smooth, largely because they're a handy size for the house, but wonderful temperaments. They're very bold, very happy. Wendell Moore was the Wyhead Dachshund judge of Crafts this year, and we see his best of breed now being examined by Cameron. Now, this Ross. one has a hard act to follow, doesn't it? We've just seen the best in show winner, but this looks a very nice one. Today. It's from a continental kennel, the Tres Paneros kennel, very famous. They come from six, Italy, six, six, and they've one. had many lovely Dachshunds, and this is lovely. Oh, Look at that Dachshund. noble head, long foreface, decorated by a bit of beard so there. Why good ground clearance here, and those lovely tight feet seven. and good bone. As its name implies, the wire should carry a dense, hard, close line. Real coat. distinctive Part features are attached. the beard and, and those the bushier eyebrows as well. And his legs and feet should be neatly covered in the, the wiry, harsh coat as well. How did they get this wiry, harsh, harsh coat? The theory is that there was a cross with terriers, with wire-haired terriers, to get this. bushy eyebrows and bearded chin. This is a very, Why very nice Dachshund dog. I like this. It's Echo, who's a European winner in 2021. No Striding up beautifully, good ground clearance, strong Dachshund. bone, very nice Breed indeed. Lovely. By Joanne Blackburn Bennett. And from her entry of 93, she We've seen the wire head. This is now the miniature wire head. So same harsh outer coat and dense undercoat, but of course the miniature breed should still be well muscled and compact with a really defiant carriage of the head. And this is one which has also had a very good career. I, I believe it's getting it's almost a veteran now. It's had many best of breeds. One all over the country. He's well able to fulfill Beautiful his type. To hunt vermin, carrying this level badges, top line. You can see it's quite deep in the body with some four chest, but full of confidence. A small dog with oodles of confidence. It's Ricky, who is indeed a veteran at nine years and four months. And he's said to love everybody and absolutely everything. And obviously loves showing he's very happy in this big ring, isn't he? 
Next it's right at home. To be judged today by our group judge is the deer hound. There were 69 of them for our judge. The beautiful Mr. gaze Yetnes of the Norway deer hound. Of One of the most elegant of breeds, a breed developed in Scotland where he was rich, this originally used to hunt wolves, the but as the with the demise the of the wolf population, he was used for coursing Isles. deer, he and that's why he carries the name the deer hound, an elegant sight hound. It, similar to a greyhound in build and stature, but with his crisp coat covering the body. And that coat, Frank, has said it should be shaggy, but How not woolly. How do you maintain it? Well, it, it, should, it should be, you know, it's a mixture of hard and soft hair, so it's got this rustic appearance to it. And it would feel what kind of crisp to the touch? Crisp to the touch is what we wanted. These very this beautiful gaze. They look as they you know looking out for the deer. It's marvellous. They can pull down full-grown stags, can't they? But they're also the gentle giants in the house. They're absolutely wonderful. But they're great hunting dogs in the field. Oh, now here we have the. As this Spitzbreed's name implies, the country of origin is Finland, where it is the national dog with a written. Breed standard going back as far as 1812. Well, this is the Finnish Spitz. This is two year old Ollie. A number of Finnish national patriotic songs. Who just wants to get moving in the ring, Frank, I think. Yes, they're, some, they're sometimes hard to handle. They're very lively dogs. This, the national dog of Finland, this iridescent red glow of the coat. Spitz characteristics, which means the sharp, pointed ears, wedge shaped head, the tail carried over the back. It should have a standoff coat. This dog is not in full coat today. Day, a standoff harsh coat with a softer undercoat. And the dog now to be judged is the Foxhound, one of the rarer show hounds here at Crufts. Best of breed is this dog. And here we have the Foxhound, I think only one in, one in competition Judging today, and this is our best of breed winner. The Foxhound is times, seen mostly as a pack hound, hound. It, and so they the were developed when the stag hunting was banned. And here we have the Foxhound. Fox Seven years hounds. old is Chorister. When there is only the one the entry in the breed, Frank, the is there still a, a, a formal judging process still has to take place? There is, and of course, if the judge doesn't think it's worthy of being best of breed, he can withhold the best of breed award. But here we are, a very active fox working foxhound, strong bone, good, important to have very good shoulders and feet for movement. No foot, no dog. You have to be good, strong feet. And I tell you, over the seven years, the Chorister has had six horse. best of Mr. breeds Greyhound, at Crufts. A breed mentioned in the forest laws made by King Canute in 1016. Oh, the really familiar sight of the Greyhound. Well, Aya is four and a half years old, has travelled from Germany to be here. And Greyhounds have had success at Crufts three times, winning best in show. The last being back Greyhound in 1956, though. Have been brought to Britain by the Celts. Although its origins are most probably in the A mixture of elegance Dogs and athletic and power. This curving outline, this lovely long head, long neck, everything about the Greyhound is functional and wonderful symmetry of outline and elegance. Deep chest, lovely curve over the top line, beautiful and in fit athletic condition. Where does it get its speed? from the is it the hind the legs the propulsion? hind legs are the propulsion the but it has to have good reach in front they have this suspended there gallop different entries from just six different breeds for judge for harding now the, the griffon fauve this is one of the taller of the breeds the griffon fauve a bigger variety we saw the basset fauve earlier this is bred with some similar bloodlines well, they're said to have a really gentle temperament, being very sociable and affectionate dogs. The judge here will be looking for a short back and fairly broad, though, still with a very level top line. Looking for some supple movement, should be moving very easy and actively across the floor. And you see the difference in the leg length. The ancestors used to hunt wolves. But this is bred down from the Brique, another of the hound families. They were judged today by Jeff Horswell, and from an entry of 13, Hamilton's best of breed is this dog, number 7174. The Hamilton Stovere, this is Larsen, three and a half years old Sweden, from Cumbria, and it's a Swedish solo hunter developed by crossing the English foxhounds with German hounds.
They were judged today, as mentioned by Jeff Horswell. Now, this breed, breed was almost extinct, and it took a, a breeder named Patrick Count Hamilton, Hamilton who created the breed, going around the Swedish Hamilton valleys to find some new blood for it, Stella. and hence we've got them back again. And what a smart, handsome hound they are. Absolutely unexaggerated and fit for function. Now for the first time in Deep-chested, a strong, the powerful neck, that's what the, the judge Harrier. will be looking for. Another of the breeds judged today by Mo Pess from Sweden. Now, this is something of a, an event. The first time at Pluffs for many years, the English Kennel Club did recognize them in the 40s, but the, the population died out. There were no one showing them. They were just re-registered last year, so we've had 20 odd of them here today. So that's a good turnout. Yeah, the first appearance in the Crufts breed ring since 1898. But what, what leads to a breed dying out, Frank? Well, really, they were pack hounds. We don't okay, often see reading. them History in the show ring, around. but I, I think we're going to see a reincarnation of them in their popularity. I think we'll have some ha pack hounds coming to join the showing population. This one, a hair pied, one of the hound colours. A smaller, small, a foxhound in miniature, really. It's a scaled down foxhound. And from his entry of 27. He selected this dog, number 7215, to represent the breed in the group. Seven-year-old bandit is an Ibethan hound, a dog that's got its roots in ancient Egypt. And bandit has come over from Norway, but such a distinct appearance, tall and narrow, and those large, erect ears. For the breed to really become established in Great Britain. Well, I did enjoy judging the breed today. This dog is, is a very good example of the breed. Leggy, as you say, is very important. And lean through, lean rib cage, lean muscles. Everything is elegant and lean about him. Now, we'll see that he's not a deep-chested dog. In many breeds, we ask for the chest to extend to the elbow. Very important here that we don't go as far as the elbow. They've got two inches gap between the bottom of the chest and the elbow. One of their breed peculiarities. The Irish Wolfhound, with an entry of 108 here today for Mrs. Susan Wilkinson, who judged the breed. Here is the tallest and most powerful of the group, and it's thought to be the tallest of all breeds, the gentle giant of the Irish wolfhounds. Originally bred to hunt wolves in Ireland, it's thought that it has greyhounds in the background, and then they were mated to mastiffs to produce a combination of speed and strength. And Irish sense at the arena, really enjoy seeing the Irish Wolfhound. This is Paris, it's four and a half from Cheshire. But yeah, the biggest of, thought to be the biggest of all the dog breeds. Can we call them the BFG of the dog world, Frank? Yes, indeed. Big friendly giants. And some of the viewers at home might recognize the handler because he's quite famous in the music world. It's Chris Amu, who was lead singer with The Real Thing. And uh, they, they're, they've reinvented themselves and they're still very popular. That's Chris Amu, the breeder with his wife Julie. Is the national dog of Norway, comrade to the Vikings, guardian of lonely farms, and a herder of Finn is two years old, Norwegian elk hound. It's such a distinctive grey coat there, an ancient hunting dog. That coat should be close and abundant with that tail tightly curled. The current breed standards being developed this is a wonderful workmanlike dog, the national dog of Norway, a very ancient breed. Skeletons of dogs of this type were found in Viking graves going back thousands of years. I love this, this thick double coat to give it protection. Those harness markings over the shoulders are a breed speciality. And again, this tail curved high over the back. I love this, it's so workmanlike, a real worker. Miss Michelle Swinge was the breed judge today for Otter. I, <clears throat> I was very keen to see the Otterhound judging today, and this is the best of breed winner. It's come from America to win, wonderfully athletic. This can be traced back to the 13th century. It's thought that the Bloodhound and later the Foxhound played some part in its ancestry. With the 
earliest references to the breed being those now when you talk about being fit for purpose frank i mean this hound has a, an oily and weather resistant double coat and a real particular feature as well webbed feet that, that's again uh, fit for function yes and you know, that oily texture gives them a sort of very houndy smell i call them odiferous and uh, that you have to be aware of that when you take on one to live in the house with you but they're a lovely breed they've got this lovely athletic stride and a very noble head absolutely look at that lovely noble head these dark eyes soft expression the beautiful breed there were 37 pharaoh hounds of which pearl won best of breed four years old from the isle of man and the pharaoh hounds native to malta where it was a rabbit hunter historically and if the outline looks familiar well you might have seen it in history books because often depicted on the tombs of the ancient pharaohs the pharaoh's short coat is easy Maintain beautiful statuesque and elegance alert, and this long clean delicate head and sharply pricked ears they're also we saw the chineco de letna earlier which breed. looks very similar in a, a miniature form this one says to be always happy in fact lives with a family with four children as well so wonderful family dog very friendly and playful we now look back to the table where we see our the Portuguese Pedengo. And this is the little Portuguese Pedengo, a rabbit hunter. He used to go into the Portuguese, known as the Portuguese Warren Hound. Three sizes. We only have the smaller size in England. They can be smooth coated or wire coated. And we see the crisp wire coat on this one. And from an entry of 37, she awarded best of breed to this bitch number seven. So this one could be smooth or wire haired. And of course, another rabbit hunter, a very small the variety. There are medium and large Portugal, breeds as well. But now, in the it, UK. it is native Portugal. They've become Here very popular as Portuguese little house pets, Portuguese rather like the Jack Russell is in this country. Breed. This one, not particularly happy in the big ring today, one, not carrying his tail above his back. Here so he's just a little bit British phased Canada. out by the big ring atmosphere. Now, a real particular feature of the Rhodesian Ridgeback is, as the name suggests, the ridge of hair, which grows in the reverse direction along its spine. It's a really athletic and courageous dog from Southern Africa. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is an agile dog, powerful and speedy. It's athletic and powerful. It had to be to, to do the job, tracking lions, holding them at bay until the hunters came. This long athletic stride. They come in this Africa red in and wheaten colour. The ridge considered changes. by the hunters as a sign of courage. Connection the better the ridge, the better the courage. There may be a bit of canine folklore in that, That's though. What we do know is that strong, courageous dogs. And this one from Switzerland, Yara, three years old. So the next of our hound breeds to be seen is another of the sight hounds here at the hound breed. The Saluki, also known as the Gazelle Hound, which tells us its quarry in the hunt. The elegant sight hound of the Middle East, named after the Persian town of Saluk. It was prized by the Bedouins along with their Arabian horses, carried in the saddle and put down on the sand when game was sighted and then set free to hunt the game. And, it is suggested that this and a real is breed feature is that feathering the on the legs and the backs dog. of the thighs for the, the long-haired variety. Uh, but a real striking dog. appearance, isn't it? Elegant and, and light-footed across the floor. And of course, as you mentioned, in the long-haired varieties, it does come in the smooth-haired variety where they don't have any furnishings, but they're quite rare. But again, this nice lifting, lifting stride and this far-away look. Joski is a four-year-old Salugi from Margate in Kent, who hasn't won any challenge certificates in this country, but has had multiple best of breeds at championship shows and best dog at the Salugi club show. It's one of the lesser-known breeds, a North African dog. The large rib cage of the yes, it is one of the North African breeds, and if you think it looks a bit ribby and light, this is because it's a breed which does not carry any subcutaneous fat. It's a that's a mechanism for helping it to deal with the hot desert conditions.
And now we come to the last of the hound breeds to be considered by Now, Kevin isn't this Robinson. beautiful? Little did those miners know when they developed this breed from the Greyhound how popular it was going to become for all over the world as the most beautiful, aesthetic show dog. However, they were bred to bring home the supper. They had to be a working dog. And also, the, the miners in Northumberland used to race them as well, in whippet racing. But here we have over 300 of them here today. That's a very strong breed. The quality in them, wonderful. Two judges. What we want is symmetry, is elegance, and muscular course. athletic power. And here, the from a famous the kennel in Holland, have been big Any winners. Look at that lovely, what we call a daisy cutting action. It skims just low so over the ground. The that seven, elegance seven, in the head and beautiful dark eyes. And coming at us absolutely parallel in its movement. That's beautiful. So as our judge, Gavin Robinson, takes one last look. So this is our hound group. Who will the judge choose for the shortlist? 2,439 hounds here today. And this is an ideal opportunity to give a round of applause to our winning best of breed hounds. Now, That's a big group, a big decision to be made here, Frank. Um, Gavin walking round, just reminding himself of what he found on hands-on examination. This is going to be a hard job. It's a big group, getting them down to eight dogs. It's a tough task. I think he'll sneak in an extra. To start his selection of a shortlist. We've seen some wonderful best of breeds, that's for sure. First to be pulled out. He's brought out the Grand, the Grand Bassett Griffin Vaudien and the Beagle. walking right past the Dachshunds, but it's the standard wire which is brought in from Italy, that the lovely dog. Dachshund. The Greyhound, that elegant Greyhound. Oh, and good. The Ibethan the, Hound, the Ibethan the hound is brought hound. in. I'm very happy with that. This hovering hound. stride of the Ibethan Hound, a brief feature. Chris Amoo with his Irish that Wolfhound, the fair hounds in. And the Rhodesian Ridgeback, and, and that show gorgeous Whippet. Congratulate the other best of breeds here in the Hound Group. Nice. Too That's big a group to cut it, cut it down anymore. What a wonderful lineup for a shortlist that is. And congratulations to all the dogs who are exiting the ring as best of breeds. So now he's got nine top quality dogs here to choose from. So I'm one's sure going to come back for Sunday evening to compete Canada. for best in show. I would recommend if you've never been to Crufts before, you come That's and see this spectacle in this arena of the judging of best in show on Draw Sunday evening. That's a Griffon Vendéan, four Mary years Hattie. of age, from the Netherlands. Five Perfect five top six. line, this lovely level back, strongly boned, that coat should be crisp to the touch. Now at this level, Gavin's checking on the movement Next of the move hind the movement beagle. and front movement Send for accuracy. The Here we see the Serena lovely Palmer. clean stride of Jacob, the, the beagle, David Craig handling. He's the breeder. What can a dog do at this stage, Frank, to really wow the judge? Stay on his toes and put on a wonderful performance. And this is putting on a wonderful performance. I like this standard wire very much. And the Greyhound gets its chance to impress. And look at that lovely long stride, the curve over the top line. Elegance personified. And you see the slight hover before it puts its foot down on the ground. That's a breed specific point, a hovering side gate. So why did you choose this particular Ibethan Hound? Well, he fits the standard so well. He, he went beautifully and is the perfect shape for the breed. The strength and power of the Irish Wolfhound. A group winner on many occasions. You know, one of the great challenges in these giant breeds is to get substance, but also now, athleticism. This is beautiful as well. Table. Lovely quality. A uh, picture of concentration there for Gavin. It's got to be very difficult to make a choice Number at this seven, stage. Up, the 
And they're all going well. Nothing is phased by this atmosphere. They've had a long day. Because, of course, all the best of breed judging is done on the same day. Very popular, the Whippets. Always popular. And this is, again, a whip bitch. The strength of Whippets in this country is amazing. And the same can be said in many countries of the world. Oh, I think we're going to see them so sent round. He's going to watch them in profile. Does this mean he's again? having trouble making well, a decision? Well, absolutely, and this is where he's going for presence. And he gives everyone a chance to presence, you look at the top line, the length of stride, the deportment of it, if you like. This is where it might catch the eye, which is carrying itself well. Gavin just giving them all a round of applause as they go by him. He's obviously very appreciative of the quality in this group. And there is the Greyhound striding out. And here's the hovering Ibethan Hound. And the power of the Irish Wolfhound, the Pharaoh Hound. Now, the Rhodesian coming now. Holding the top line, keeping the shape on the move is what's important. It shows good balance. And here's that lovely whippet. It's a really tough so lineup for again. our judge to pick who will and go through to best in show balls. on Sunday night. An incredible hound group we've seen. And you see the mixture of types in the group. By looking at this, this the size, the shape, and the purpose for which they were developed. Right. A real good selection of hounds there, different shapes, different sizes. He's going to stand back. He's going to get the four in order now. This is where you need to take a breath. One, two, three, four. 2022 is. He's heading over towards. The Dachshund. Oh. The it's Greyhound. The greyhound. Oh, the Greyhound has won it. One, well, five, we one. thought we was heading for the standard wire for a moment. There. So the Greyhound coming back on Sunday to compete for best in show. What a moment that is for Aya from Germany. And here Greyhound. is the Whippet from seven, Holland. Seven, three, two. Three is. It's the Pharaoh Hound. The beautifully elegant seven, Pharaoh four, two, Hound. Four. This one came from the Isle of Man. Now, who's getting now the fourth spot? Is it's the Grand, Grand Basset Griffin Bordien. A breed close Line to Gavin's heart. Line well done Line to these Line others Line making the cut in that very strong group. Yep, yeah, that's a Dutch dog in fourth place. But it's the Greyhound that goes through to best in show, so joining lovely. Siberian see, Husky, the Border Collie, and the Irish Terrier. Warm applause and well done for, for those fantastic wins. But here, Ina and your Greyhound has topped the Hound group here. Wow. How are you feeling? I cannot believe it. <laughs> I have no words. It's amazing. Please don't say that. It's not my favorite oh, it's amazing. <laughs> answer. Now, tell us about your journey to crafts. Well, my journey to crafts, I've been visiting for years now. Um, I had some good placements during the years. I got best of breed with my homebred and both CC winners last time. And today we had another fantastic day with a CC, best of breed, reserve CC, which, and, re and reserve dog CC. Oh, wow, well, <laughs> you've had a really marvelous craft there. Yeah, and then this to top it up. Yeah, and just what, what were you thinking about this performance of your girl in here? She never lets me down. She is a dream. Well, she certainly didn't leave, let you down there, Ina. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, hands together, please, for the Greyhounds. That's another wonderful and emotional moment, and the number of handlers who we hear just say, I'm lost for words. Yes, it's absolutely. such a huge it's moment in that career. Not, perhaps it's not a good moment to interview them when they've just had the win. It's another international group winner to go through to Best in Show. And she... Look at that, that's just what it means. Aya is the Greyhound's pet name. 
from Germany, four and a half years old, and goes through to best in show. Whip it in second place. The crowd really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> look at look at the standing to attention. Well done again. <laughs> That's how to receive a prize. <laughs> 